no wisp. Maybe one of your eyes. I'm going to go with this purple one. I think it's good. Hit new. Any questions? And click on this. Oh, this is a, a module. It's a dungeon I made before. I actually made it in Orlando. And I was able to share it. Come here and download it. We let you share all the content that you make. Okay. And hit load at the bottom. And it's just a small dungeon. We're going to go through. Accept. And what? This, this is just the lobby, so once they all join, they can come in. So now I'm waiting for my players to arrive. Correct. To get ready for me to do the evil things to them. Remember, it's four with one, not four versus one. Oh, come on now. This is a shared storytelling experience. Excellent. And so the DM can work on creating these modules while offline, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're the cleric. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's two, we have two clerics. One's a more of a... Battle, uh, battle cleric. And, and so this, uh, is this something okay. that you so, uh, set while you're building uh, the module you, as far as the difficulty? The so when you're building oh, the module, like creating the dungeons, you have pretty, other settings that can sort of help populate the dungeon with encounters that are easy, medium, or hard. This actually regulates uh, some other behind the scenes things like how much friendly fire there is, um, level offsets for enemies versus big players. So, so you don't have to build the module necessarily with these uh, you don't have to build it three times for each different so, uh, thing. That's correct. The, uh, everything is left click. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. It looks like I have a party to share my story with. All right, is everyone ready for this this violent story? You have a hard one. Uh, okay. Uh, they're still learning how not to die. Whilst people move the camera, talk about it. We got a ranger, ranger, fighter, cleric. So we're all set up in one room here, but this is going to be online multiplayer, correct? Yes, absolutely. In fact, this is going through the Steam servers right now. Oh, uh, before we put a filter on it this morning, people here were able to join the games out on the back floor, which isn't a good thing, so we filtered that out. But yes, this is an online game. So go ahead and start game. I think everyone's ready. If you weren't ready, you better get ready. So to move the camera around is really easy. Hold the middle mouse button and drag okay. to move the camera. Hold the right mouse button and drag to rotate the camera. And zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Uh, we also have the same functionality in WASD and Q&E if you'd rather use the keyboard. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's nice and easy on the mouse. We let the uh, DM zoom out much further than we do the players. So if you ever want to stream view, you can zoom all the way out. And you can sort of double click on something to jump back in, or you can just put the mouse wheel back in. Okay. Uh, you can so always this here? target your friendlies. So the D20, the, the floating D20 forward. shows you the encounter so for that space. So if you right click on that, okay. you can change you up can the default encounter. So right now it's set to a four corners ambush medium. So if you, you can actually change the encounter, which will change the actual guys you see there, the pewters. Or you can change the difficulty, and you'll see some guys will change into other guys. It might add new enemies. Yeah. And, uh, exactly. Uh, Got it. So the most important thing is up here in the corner, you have a meter called DM Threat, and that is a resource you use to manage the real-time experience. When you're making a, you're making a module offline, there is no threat. You do whatever you want. But when you're online like this, playing with your buddies, uh, we do have this meter, and you'll see that everything you do here costs something. So if you go to the Drow tab here, this lets you draw, draw enemies. So that one costs 12 Threat. Uh, you earn Threat when the party's doing well. If they're killing enemies, if they're unlocking doors, if they're, uh, if they're finding and, and uh, sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> when they find and they defuse your traps, they okay. disarm the traps there and threat as well. So the the general idea is the better they're doing, the more tools you have to uh, challenge them. Oh, okay. So once enemies spawn, you have a couple options. If you left click on the enemy, you can then direct him where to go and who to attack by left clicking on people or places. Uh, you can actually drag select groups of enemies and tell them all to attack the cleric if you wanted to. You can manage combat much like you would in RTS. Uh, if you'd rather, you can right click on an enemy and you get a bunch more options when you do that. And over here you can even possess the creature which will give you all their abilities down here in the ability bar. Uh, you can promote and demote them. That will affect their stats. It will also give them advantage or disadvantage on rolls. And you can remove them completely, just in case you really have a hard encounter. You can also change the hostility. If you wanted to make an NPC, or if you want to make a friendly person to fight alongside them, you could do that too. Or if you're telling a story and the spider is going to suddenly have a change of heart and become friendly, you could do that. Um, you can create objects. Right click, go back to this menu over here. In the objects tab, we have uh, tons and tons of props you can use to decorate the area. Uh, you can put them just for decoration, or if you want to, you, you can name light, them, you can put text on them that they can uh, bigger, click on. Heels, so this uh, is how you add story as exactly. you're going Exactly. This tent's an example. I put this in here, I added this tent offers very little protection. 
Um, you can actually make that discoverable if you want to. They have to pass a DC check that you, you have to put in. You can either see it or just be able to click on it, whatever you want to do. So this is how you would leave breadcrumbs around for them to exactly. figure out riddles, etc. Exactly. Uh, we also support voice over IP, so I hope the DMs will be telling stories that way too. We have text chat. Uh, if you hit enter, you can actually type to them now. And we got to get rid of that. Prepare to die. Um, oh, friendly. Uh, so traps, traps are great. You place them. You see this blue ring around the party? Yep. That is their, them searching. They're already paranoid of what you might have ahead of them. But when that tra when that search goes off, yeah, it's fair game. You have some traps, and you never know. All right. So it looks like I have plenty of threats. So I want to try to drop something on them. Today. Sure. And so am I limited in how far away from them I can place this, or can I put it? Absolutely not. No, you can put it. I mean, this, the green ring is your limitation. You can't put it directly on top of them, but you can work in the next room. You can work three rooms down. You can work in the same ring. So as we're dealing with this, let me show you something cool. Okay. If you hit escape and go into the characters menu at the top, click over here on new character, we're going to make a new enemy. So click on monsters in the top right. Okay. All right, so at the very top, you have arrows that you choose which monster set. And you'll see an entire list of monsters from that set. If you see someone you think is interesting, you'd like to make modifications to, make a new guy, go ahead and click on him. Okay, well, we're fighting spiders, so why don't we uh, create this new place, spider? So what can we do here now that we've got this? Spider? Now we've got the new spider. You click on appearance. It's a little more interesting when you change the appearance for a, another type of creature, because the spider doesn't have as many things that you can customize. Mm -hmm. But you can change his colors, obviously. There's even a randomized button at the bottom if you just want to go completely crazy and some random fixes. Oh yeah, because a spider is going to be a spider, right? So. Great, great weapon fire. I would be happy with that. Go to stats. The biggest thing here is where it says level offset near the middle. Uh, you can say you want the spider to be X number of levels above or below the average party level. So if you want him to be a little bit easier, you can make him two levels below the level, the average party level, or you can make him much more difficult if you'd like. Uh, you can go up to abilities. This is where you can really go crazy. So right now he has those three abilities, phase by ethereal repulsion and ethereal jaunt. You can go through the different categories of abilities, and you can give that spider anything that you want. Ah, so I can have this particular spider. You can have a spider that someone's undead. That's exactly right. And you can give them up to ten. And then if I have possession of this spider, I would be able to use these abilities. Otherwise, the AI will tell him when he should be using these Yes, the AI will use them if you don't. Yeah, let's get more. <laughs> I'm happy with that. So spider doesn't have any equipment. Um, other enemies you'll be able to change their weapons are their equipment. So just go down to summary. And in the very far right, you can give him a name. Mm -hmm. uh, Fluffy, right. exactly. And just hit complete. Fluffy, and he's the manslayer. Keep in mind. Fluffy the manslayer. So complete, and then hit escape to go back to the game. And Fluffy will now be in your character list. Fluffy, there he is. 40 threat, which you can afford. Oh, so this big beam of light here, this is DM loot. Not only do players find random loot when people die, but DM can as well. And when you pick it up, it's going to go to your bar down here. They gave you a little bit to start with. But there's a couple of cool things you can do. Uh, you've got a couple here that let you spawn enemies. So those don't cost you any threat at all. You can spawn um, what you have, a zombie horde by clicking on it and then clicking when the scene you want the zombie horde to be. And that costs you no loot. Or sorry, no threat. You also have you also have potions that will give you threat. And these flasks are cool. Like you have a blessed flask. The way that works is you use that flask, and then any enemies you place for the next 20, 30 seconds will have that, that buff on them. All right, so let's bring in Fluffy and let's see how they Fluffy's like it. Fluffy's going to be blessed. This one and player, he's going to immediately you know, summon undead. Yeah, <laughs> and shoot the fireball. And shoot the party. Uh, uh, Fluffy the Manslayer. Uh, we'll see how they deal with Fluffy the Manslayer. Very nice. Uh, you can also change the lighting and atmosphere anytime you want. Sometimes I wait until they get to a big encounter and I'll just darken the room or you know, go red or whatever it is you want to do. And that is a construct uh, thing. That's, that's for you to do that whenever you want. No threat. So now if I want to place a trap for them, can I trap this particular thing? You can. Right click on that. So that's a secret door. Just click over here on trap. Add trap. Choose the kind of trap you want. And then you can make it very difficult to spot and disable or somewhat difficult or easy to spot and disable. There we go. And then... Then you just click away, right click away. Okay. So that, that secret door now has a trap on it. And you can do that to any object. You can do it to treasure chests. You can do it to the tent. Anything you place. Any, you anything interactable, right? Anything interactable, okay. exactly. Uh, do any have to oh, they found it and we disabled it. I'm going to have to make it more difficult next time. <laughs> So up here, obviously, this is party stats. Yes, that shows you exactly how well they're doing. Uh, you can double-click on them at any time to find them. 
Uh, sometimes I like to work ahead of the party just to create little events before they get there. It's always really neat to be able to jump back. What did you lock? Oh, he got to it uh, while you were doing it. So that, the spider you're seeing there in the Statue of Wolf, that's some stuff that I dressed up before, just as an example of something you could do. Uh, they can't click on all that, they can only click on the Statue of Wolf, because I've heard scripted text on that. Yeah, they look far too comfortable, and you've got a full, full bar of thread here. You've got lots of options. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's make this room here. So what's this, uh, they may not come this way because they, they came around this way oh. and that loops back. They might. Yeah, so but I'm guessing they're going to go the other way. So either way, they're going to come through here. Uh, right. The other way, actually. Oh. We got rotated. Yeah, all the way right. 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 exactly. right. well, Let's make this more interesting. Now you want to be So the group has to. Right. What do we got? So there's a couple of things that are really awesome that don't cost much threat at all. Okay. So zombies are five threat. You've got 120 threat. That's a lot of zombies. Or you can place my personal favorite. And the spider thing, they're called spider eggs. These things are only five threat. If they kill it before it hatches, it doesn't do anything. They're very they're very vulnerable, they can kill it very easily. But if they happen to not kill it in time, it will spawn a spider. Or it might spawn twenty spiders. Oh, okay. And you can sort of hide them too with some objects. You can go to objects, go to cave, click on spider web. And scheme codes will work and you start placing spider webs around them. So if you buy the five packs, you sort of dress up areas like this. And again, this is stuff you can do before they get there. Obviously, you can do this stuff in real time as well. Oh, wow. They got them all. Well, that. Wow, that was a nice shot. Wow. Was... But you know what it did? It gave you a whole bunch of threat back. Wow. I'm dead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something's clearly wrong with these spiders. <laughs> Fluffy's back. So Fluffy did not take kindly to them killing his eggs. No, Fluffy did, Fluffy did not like the eggs being destroyed at all. Quick, somebody stabilize the cleric. <laughs> uh, so I can see how this, this is excellent. So when you're offline, uh, there's more options available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an entire locations tab you can go through. You have the entire Forgotten Realms you can add dungeons to. Oh, wow. You can add surfaces to. You can add... Uh, templated quests, which are just questions you can go very quickly create to kill this many of this, to collect this many of this. Or you can do custom quests that you can set up to do pretty much whatever you want. You can write out dialogue, you can uh, determine the, the conditions that complete the quest, you can unlock locations on giving and completing quests. There's a lot of really cool stuff we're hoping people will embrace and create a bunch of cool content to share with the community. Yeah. Uh, no, there's no crap. So is there going to be anything that people can create, like, can people create their own traps <laughs> to submit? Not traps, not for launch. Okay. Uh, they can create their own enemies, they can create their own enemy sets, and you can't share those directly, but you can share those as part of a campaign. Okay, so if I wanted to stick Fluffy in there and then put that campaign out there for somebody to... They could grab your campaign, and I could DM this for Fluffy, and I could use my words. And then, of course, on top of this, we have an entire 40-hour story campaign. Uh, 40 plus hours to build a site content, and that's it's a uh, full story with companions. You play one to four players. Oh, so that's cooperative as well. Excellent. It is absolutely. There's no DM in that in that level in that uh, experience, but you can cooperative with your team. Anybody? And you can take your character that you've made from one mode to another. It's just like taking your character sheet with you to another team. So if you have enough threat, which you do, you might want to possess the spider, which he's wanting you to do. And if he does. And you'll get access, access to all of the spider's abilities. We'll let him say it. <laughs> access to all the spider's him. abilities. I think you've been listening to me. No, I'm, I, I'm, that's part of my presentation. <laughs> I see. I'll buy it. <laughs> so when you possess the spider, you can click away and do other things, and then when you then come back to the spider, she'll be possessed again. Did you possess her? I did not. There we go. There you go. Now you have it's all kind of unfair abilities. that you promoted that spider. I didn't promote the spider. How did you promote The spider <laughs> might have gotten promoted. Well... DMs out there, be careful if you misclick on a promote. <laughs> you know, you can actually unpromote and it'll give you threat back, if you so wish. They look like they're doing okay. They are yeah, not having no, trouble. Kind of yeah, they're not having any trouble at all. So, since they destroyed all your spider eggs last time, I like when that giant spider is yeah. there with that huge bulbous back in. I had a bunch of spider eggs under that without anybody seeing. It was not going out loud here, you know? <laughs> not quite as much as that. Uh, so I don't have a whole lot, but this will totally work. And now they're actually hatching. Perfect. Oh, you have some DM loops too, hiding behind whatever Oh, I do. 
It'll be on whatever dead body is there. Oh, something troll. That'll be unexpected. Oh, they beat the spider. Oh, no, they didn't defeat the troll. Little spiders. You guys want spiders everywhere? Is that what I heard? That can be arranged. What an accommodating DM. How about spiders that throw fireballs? Why not? The best kind. And they're still doing really well. So, yeah, I definitely could see how a more party-friendly DM could use this to make really interesting stories. Absolutely. That is our hope. And to spice things up and balance it on the fly. Yeah. It's always easier to pick it up and start playing versus, you know, mentality. Because it's yeah. easier that way. You get all these tools and you want to see how you can do it. But uh, once you start spending some time with it, then it becomes easier to sort of play both sides. They want the challenge, right? They also want to have some of that story to mix it up. Um, Travis! You cannot get spider fireballs. <laughs> Actually, so where is the rocks fall, everybody dies, but... Uh, we don't have a actually. That was called Meteor Storm. And the Meteor Storm. Storm. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's wow. right. <laughs> that is not on here. We found that was a bit OP. So we would only include the Rock Fall Everyone Dies ability for the DM if we in could also include the Order Pizza for the DM ability by the player. Well, let's see. No, I want a PayPal link at the end when they're rating you. They can also tip the DM. There you go. I think that'd be great. Now we're talking. Just puts a dollar in the PayPal. And in space receives a. Uh, 20% sure. of that fee. That Feature requests. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> so they get to just click on the exit and it'll be over. Yep. yep. Excellent. Yeah, it's like they want you to put oh, some traps in front of the exit. That giant spider is literally the only thing. thing. Yeah. They're oh. waiting to destroy the world. Oh. It would have been perfect. <laughs> and you guys took it out. You have earned a ball. Dungeon Master <laughs> patch. Awesome. <laughs> You've just played through the entire That's story awesome. campaign. And I cannot wait <laughs> to get my hands on this. Great. Well, September 29th, you can play and cross-play with all three. Perfect. Awesome. We had one, we had one thank guy you for your time, and thank you for volunteering the DM. Yeah. It's been intimidating for some, but everyone's picked it up really quickly when so try. For people that want to find out more info on the game, where can they find that? Swordcoast.com. And uh, Swordcoast on Twitter. Ash, our media manager, has better information than I do. We also do a Twitch stream weekly on Swordcoast Legends on Twitch. So you can see a lot of We're playing through some story stuff, too, which we haven't shown as much. Awesome. But we have two premium packs. We're excited. Uh, so we get it out there.